So hello and welcome to a session of Battle Brothers. So um, those that know me um, will know that I play Civilization V and I record um, sessions on, on YouTube. And But I also like playing, I really like playing um, Battle Brothers and that is a game sort of the sort of caveman in, in you, right? The guy who wants to like in like in Vikings, you know, you want to get out your big axe and go around the world and smack somebody over the head or just chop it off or... well if that's you occasionally then Battle Brothers is the game for you um, so for those Civ uh, lovers um, I just want to play a little bit and if you're sort of interested let me know in comments and I'll do a little introductory um, episode I'll do a little recording so um, this is our world map here <clears throat> So these are the bits that we have revealed. Um, this one we haven't explored yet. On the map, <coughs> excuse me. On the map, you got some um, cities. You also got um, special locations like enemy camps or some sort of um, legendary locations where special things happen. Um, in the cities, <coughs> you got shops and where you can buy equipment, you got a marketplace where you can sell stuff. You got people you can hire, um, sort of different backgrounds. Um, you also got contracts um, where you can, <coughs> excuse me, contracts where you can do um, fulfill certain missions and you get money for it. You get some um, company experience. I'm talking about your company. You got sort of got a a crew of people. Um, so you start off with very few people, depending on what you choose at the beginning of the game. You might have three people or just one guy, or you might have 12. Lots of really, really poor equipment. And sort of as you progress with the game, you level those guys up. Um, with each round, you get um, points here, which you can add to your to your stats here, like melee attack, uh, range skill. Then you got melee defense and range defense. You got like your hit points. You got your fatigue here, which sort of de determines um, how often you can act. Um, that is coupled to the um, action points in combat. You got the resolve of the guy and the initiative, which sort of determines the move order i don't want to explain too much this is going to be sort of a rough thing and people sort of enjoy it I'll, i might do some more of it um you got your equipment um you got your weapons right you got this guy got a spear your man's got a flail here we got a great sword and depending what you have you got a big old mace here you know to clop somebody over the head um you got cleavers they also sort of do different things. Some of them are more accurate than others. You got the guys in the back row. They all got like two-handed and range two weapons. Sort of they hit your enemies over the head of the front line. You got an archer, right? So he can shoot at things from range. And that's our sergeant who can rally our troops. I'm just going to keep it sort of really rough here yeah, um, for the beginning um, so we got some guys they're really up to level 8 9 10 11 um, actually I'll show you something else they also get perk points with each level and um, that they get they can choose one of those perk points here and they all sort of do different things which is pretty obvious right so this guy is level 11 already so he's got like Pathfinder, which means he can move around a little um, on any terrain. Sort of, he's got Dodge and Nimble, which are sort of determine his defense. Um, and sort of, he's got Berserk, which means if he killed somebody, he gets some action points returned. We can talk about those things a little bit more in detail later. Um, at the moment, I still got two perk points left open because I haven't got quite determined what I want to make of this guy when, when he's got his, like, um, when I sort of find a, a special weapon, like a legendary weapon or something. 
So I might give him one of those. And then depending on if it's a single-handed or a two-handed weapon, I might um, choose one perk or the other. So I just want to show you the game a little bit. So we're going to accept this three-star contract here. There's two locations we have to do. Um, it's not going to be easy. So free spell contracts are the hardest ones. And then you get quite a bit of money from this one. So it's going to be quite tough. Um, so we can accept this contract. And here are the two locations we need to get to. And this one is on the hill. This one is up there. I think we might do the one over there first. Let's just have a look. Sort of lacking tools. You need tools to repair your, your gear. Um, we can also sell a lot of... Our in inventory is pretty full, so we got loot after each battle. So we want to um, clear out some of the rubble we don't need. I might not do this perfectly now, but this is just a session to show you the game a little bit. And let's get rid of that stuff. Ideally, you want to um, sell things for the highest price, and it's, say this one says um, 103, and it's worth 600, so you get about a sixth, um, which is not a good price. Um, if you get a fifth, that, that's pretty good. But getting... Um, Less money is still better than getting no money because if you go to a location, get lots of loot and you can't take it because you're full up, means um, missing out on things. So let's just sell all that stuff here. If we miss out on some money, that's okay. Let's sell that stuff. That you get sort of different tier weapons, um, you get tier one, two, and three. We can sort them, maybe we can see that. See, we got like um, different spears here, right? So this is a tier 2 spear. It does like 30 to 35 damage. And this is a level 3 tier. Um, higher, it does 45 to 40 damage. And it's also more durable. This one's got 64. And this one's got 72. And so it is for most of the weapons. And also for our armor and things like that. And shields. Like this is the highest tier shield apart from the legendary ones. This crap thing we can sell. And we don't need free crossbows. Um, we probably don't even need one. And you can find some some treasure like um sigmund ring or you can find silver and gold even. You can sell that. Maybe I'll just keep that for a better price. So let's look at our guys and um, and this guy was injured in the last fight, even the one beforehand, so he's missing some hit points. And he also needs some repair to his um, helmet here. But we can actually... He is actually also our hammer guy. Big fuck of hammer. Would you just love to swing at somebody, right? I see the guy here with, with this um, red cross, like um, they're missing hit points. This one is almost healed again. And here you can see the armor, so that's in pretty bad shape. It's only at 46%. It's sort of clawing a little bit because that is a famed um, item. So we just bought some tools to repair that stuff. Actually, we're going to unclick. You can repair anything in your inventory. We haven't got a lot of tools, so let's just have a look here. We've got, we just bought two stacks of tools, which is going to be 40, and we need 21 tools to repair everything. So that is good. So it actually means we can also repair some of the stuff um, in our inventory. Um, repaired items sell for more money than unrepaired ones. So that will do, and let's just get into a battle. Um, 
as I said, this is just to show you guys um, the game is all about. Let me just pause here. We can also yeah, got a little bit of money, and we've got a, a slot open. These are like sort of specialists that you can hire. So we got two guys already. We got a recruiter, which uh, makes sort of more people available in each city, and also you pay less money for them uh, to try them out or to hire them. This guy is the scout. He's going to help us move around the terrain more efficiently. And the paymaster is something I really want to get because our wages are really, really high. So if we can reduce them by 15% here. Um, so we're paying out over 800 gold a day, which is quite a lot. So this is going to save us 120 gold a day, which is quite a bit. So we're going to hire him. So the less we pay out for our guys, the more we get for uh, weapons and stuff. So we have to move over the mountain here. It's just going to... And we discovered another location here. Um, it also tells you what's in there. So, so you got different kinds of enemies. You got the undead here. And then you got, um, you got orcs, which are sort of big things that sort of hit you pretty hard and well armored. Then you got bloody goblins, which are, which are just the most annoying little shits you can come across. They sort of shoot at you from the poison arrows and, and do all sorts of shit to you. And then you got, um, in the north, you got like barbarians. You got like normal brigands, bandits, raiders here in the middle. And then you sort of got nomads and sort of desert guys down here in the south. And we might not want to do that right now because we don't want to take any any injuries or too much damage. And talking about injury and damage, this game is not easy, Battle Brothers. Um, it really should be said. And it's a game that's really, really tough in the beginning. And when you choose the highest difficulty, you should take it seriously and don't get attached too much to you guys because some of them will just die. It's just um, it's just what happens, right? So you got your stats on each man. Let's just take somebody um, as an example. This guy, this guy's got really low melee um, skill. You want somebody around 90, 85 plus to 90. And he, when he sort of confront somebody in battle you got a certain percentage that he hits him and just the same um the enemy's got a certain likelihood that he'll hit you and you might have really really high defense and the probability that the enemy will hit you might be five percent but there is a five percent chance that he will hit you and if if he's got a fuck of hammer or something in his hand and he hits you on the head, the chances are you'll, you'll die or you'll be traumatized for the rest of your life, you have a permanent injury. And a 5% chance means like 1 in 20 times it's going to happen. And the game is just so that it might happen twice in a row. So you guys will die, just like they might have a 95% chance to hit somebody. It could well mean that you miss twice in a row. Or you might miss a 95% and an 85 and an 80 and two 75s all in a row. It's just how this game works. So here we got um, Undead, that's the type of enemy we've got. And we've got Armored Wiedergangers, they are not so tough. And we got two to three fallen heroes. Um, they're usually quite well armored, they got some good weapons. But basically, this should be um, pretty easy. And this guy is we're building him up as a tank, a very high melee defense. So he'll just come. He's gonna have a mace. That's gonna be alright. This one, that thing is not gonna be good in this fight. And we haven't got him a, a weapon specification yet, so we 
can give him anything in that case we might just give him an axe or a cleaver um, maybe the axe i like the cleaver and he um I'll come to that in a bit this one hitting with this thing um costs you four action points and we always have nine action points at the start of each round I talk about that when we get to combat and this guy has also got a shield we don't need that maybe a 25 is not so bad and he's got a cleaver and this thing is damaged but he shouldn't take too much damage he's got a fuck off mace it's good he's got a sword but uh, um because he's got fairly low melee um skill the sword has got a higher um, chance to hit. It says that at the bottom does 10% chance to hit. So he can keep that. And then he's got another big old cleaver. Um, the archer will not do a lot of damage here. So we can take those guys into battle. And let's go. Uh, attack together? No, 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 no. I'm not going to share. So let's have a look at combat here. So it's the turn-based affair, um, and the order is determined by the initiative of those people, which is one of the um, stats. Let me show it. it's the stat down here. So the guy between us and the enemy with the highest initiative will go for it. Like this guy's got pretty high. I don't know if he's the highest. He's a guy with 99. So, so he goes first, or oh, what? I didn't actually pay attention. There's another enemy in this battle, and I haven't seen who it is. So we actually got 48 enemies. So we have to have a look. This is a bit bad because um, it's not what I wanted for this introduction to the game. Yeah. Just move our guys forward a bit. If the other guys about, um, I don't want them to get all the kills. We want to get all the kills. More kills means more XP. In fact, I'm actually moving um, forward too much here. But this is not how it should be done. It's just I want to would like that to show it um just sort of um obstacles in the way so terrain is a thing in this game just like mountains when you, those on the higher ground will have more chance to hit somebody When you play this, um, you're gonna have to think about the move order quite a bit. It's it's really important, right? So if just because one of you guys can move first, it doesn't mean you should move him forward. And you know there's like six archers waiting to shoot him to death, right? So, and there's also a thing, um, depending on how much ranged um, guys you have it sort of determines whether certain enemies will attack you or just sit back um, okay we just move up against them now as i said this is not how i would normally do it's just doing just anything as to show it he's in contact if i try to move away from somebody i'm in contact with i'm going to get hit by this guy I might dodge the blow because my defense is high, but generally you can't just move out. You engage the melee, so you can't run away. And the archer will not hit a lot, um, but I can show you. You can also see this guy is covered by that guy, so my chance to hit is, is lower. See, it's 11% here. 
Let's just leave him at the back here. He can come forward. Let's go, he can come forward. Okay, so he's not a guy. So I can hit several guys now, and it tells me the likelihood that I'll hit them. It's 95%. I got two. I got a mace in my hand, so I can just club him normally on the hit. I can also stun him, right? Um, he can't stun every enemy, but he can stun those ones. So if you want to incapacitate one of them because you're scared of his weapon or something, you should do that. Um, it's actually not a bad idea. Can just demonstrate it. Because he's got... Um, he's a mace guy. And oh, he hasn't actually got the weapon skill. If I gave him this one here, then he would be guaranteed to stun on hitting him. Now, if you if you miss him, you're obviously not going to stun him. And we got nine action points here at the start of the turn. So we used up four of them to get a hit. We got five left, so we can hit again as long as we got enough fatigue. Sort of a stamina thing, right? If this one the fatigue is way up high, then you can't act anymore. So let's just stun this guy as well. It's just for demonstration purposes. So those guys, they can't act this turn, right? Which means they can't deal any damage. So that's good. So he's got a cleaver. Again, if I hit him, it costs me four a, um, action points. And I do quite a bit of damage. This guy is, he, he's got a ranged weapon, so he can hit here, but nobody's there, so we wait. I don't know what the other enemy is, I would like to see that. So he's got a big fuck off axe here, um, he's got a range of two as well, so he can hit this guy. Or we just move forward. Um, and by the way, so this one here, it's it takes six action points, right? If you're nine. So we can just about move. It cost me two. I got seven left, which is enough to hit. Um, he's got a shield. I could actually try and destroy that shield. Um, or I could just try and hit him. But see this guy? I only got a 56% chance to hit him. And where here it's 81 because he hasn't got a shield. So this guy is not as dangerous as this one. So I take my chances here. This guy, I want, I want that guy to be in the middle, here even, so I'm gonna move this one up there. Actually it doesn't make much, too much sense hitting this one who's stunned anyway, but as I said, um, just demonstrating some things. This guy, um, just like him, he's got a pole arm, but he's got a special one. He's got an attack where he can reap um, across three people, provided he's got enough action points left. So I need five for the hit. And if I move two tiles, um, I'll be left with just about five. And this skill here, I can reap across three guys. It goes from right to left. So either those three or those three. As I just said, he's um, stunned anyhow, so we're gonna hit this guy. And it was actually enough to kill two of the fuckers. Nice. So another pole arm guy. Um, he's also got some throwing weapons. Um, there is a skill where you can switch between weapons really, really quickly without losing any action points. I wouldn't mind healing that guy with a cleaver or I should have hit him. So that's my sergeant. He can just wait a second until he's out of the way. Make a start on this guy. Um, he's got a whip. You can use the whip to disarm a guy. So let's just try to hit that guy first. And then he has got he's got the skill quick hands, right? So I can switch between weapons and then I can try and disarm him. 
so that he can stun me with the maze. Bring this guy forward. Kill somebody and just hold the line. Archer, he still doesn't got no free shot. He has a this guy, but because it's night time, um, his chance to hit is reduced to 46%, unless I take an aim shot and it goes up a little bit higher. But it takes up more of your action points, right? It takes up seven instead of four for the for the normal quick shot. So we can try, we actually hit. That guy can just wait and see. Um, I'm gonna wait with him as well. Here you can sort of see um, the chances the enemies have or you have of, of hitting somebody. Interested? See, he hit me, did some damage. Okay, he's come close enough so we can hit this guy with a big old cleaver. And if you reduce his health, by enough, you can take this decapitate here, and if he hits, he chops off his head. The thing about the undead is, if you kill them, they can come back um, after a turn or two. You have to kill them all over again. When they come back, they got like reduced health and and stuff, but no coming back, but then no head. Right, so chopping off a head is a nice thing. There's another fallen hero, so this guy has got the target now. He's acted already, same him. Still got some action points, I could still move at all if I wanted to. So he hasn't acted in the first round. Kill the guy with the cleaver or the axe. Axe shreds your armor quite a bit. He's finished for the turn. He can come a little bit closer. That's our tanky, he's got very low hit chance. Actually, the spear helps a bit. And he's got a sword, he can hit one guy. But because it's a big old sword, he can actually even hit two guys standing behind each other. But that costs more action points than the normal hit. Actually, it doesn't, but it costs more fatigue. So the, the, the hits... They don't just take um, action points, but they also take fatigue. This one takes 15, the big hit um, takes 30. And that is your fatigue. At the moment, I haven't used any. Um, after each round, you get 15 fatigue returned. So let's just hit him normally. That's enough to kill him. And this guy can move up. Next round. So whoever the other enemy is, they got archers. So it's either goblins or it's just some bandits. I reckon it's bandits. He missed. So you had an 85% chance to hit him, but he rolled a hundred. Missed. So he stunned this guy again. I mean, if you're sure you, you kill him this turn, you don't, don't have to stun him, you just hit him. Um, let's try and hit that big guy again and miss. You could try and break the shield, and which makes it more likely to hit. But then again, by the same token, the guy with um, a one-handed weapon does more damage. Um, so if you take his shield away and he hits you, he'll hit you harder. So here's a um, clever guy. So those billhooks are, are doing a lot of damage here. He's got one as well. He hit this guy, so he, this guy doesn't get flanked too badly. And he acted already. And I'd like to kill the guy with the axe. 
Like he really shreds the armor, I don't like that. So here's the guy who can hit three guys in a row. So move him one down and you can hit those three. Nice. And those weapons, you can get them. Oh, he got hit off a, a cleaver. And he's even pleading. Just pretty nasty. He's actually the wrong guy to be fighting this one. He's only got a silly old sword and he doesn't even hit him. I have to bring this guy closer. Can you kill that guy and hang. See, that's what I mean. The caveman in you enjoys that, right? Hang on the hit. I'm gonna bring my archer down here. And he's gonna use his throwing weapons. So. This guy is in contact with him, but because he's dazed, um, he's not exercising sort of sort of control over him. So we can try and move up a bit. And still hit him. We need to. Ah. He's. He's got two stacks of bleeding. Um, so he, each time he will lose five hit points per turn. So he's going to lose 10 hit points per turn for three turns. So let's get the big clear out and straight up. Finish this guy first. He's got the berserk skill. He gets some action points refunded when he kills somebody. And he misses this guy, 79% chance. And here you see the bleeding damage. So next time we're gonna try to kill that guy quickly. Maybe ignore this fallen hero. This guy come into our back. Put this guy. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Um, you guys can die pretty quickly. He's down to two thirds health, his armor is sort of in tatters, and he's also got a thing called, um, what is it, his morale. Um, each time he gets hit, his morale sinks because he doesn't like getting hit. That's it out. So he's got a big old axe. He can move down a bit as well. And he's got a rotation skill. That's one of the perks. See, he can rotate somebody out, so he can switch position. So worst case scenario, um, I'm gonna switch those two around, and he maybe he can run away or he can take some damage. So this guy, he's got a little bit of defense. It's not great. So in melee def you want to have 25 plus, he's got 13, so he can maybe take a hit, but not too many. So for the time being, we leave it as it is. The good thing about the undead is that they got really, really low initiative. So we, normally we get to move first. He's finally dead. That guy. And you see here, um, if you hit like twice in each in each turn, um, your fatigue builds up, right? So this guy is going to get killed anyway. He's only got 15 hit points left. And then hit that guy a little bit. And see then my fatigue is going to get up to 74. So next turn probably I won't be able to hit twice. Um, so I want to kill those guys down here to allow other guys to get through to my man down there. That's good damage. And this is the real target here. So it's. Also, try to get the guy who's flanking us, and 
I'll make a room for the sergeant so he can step in there. And here I wait on It also tells you when the act says in 30 turns, so he's gonna go first. Mm. Could rotate him out. If he acts first, and him, and him, he's gonna get hit three times, so let's do that. Hit this guy as hard as we can. This guy, maybe the archer can kill him with a throwing weapon. Nice, isn't it? I love about this game. It's got some really sort of rewarding effects. And he got killed as well by a throwing weapon. So things are looking a little bit better. So can we kill this guy? Okay, health really low, off with a head, and this guy, and I'm gonna move him, I, I could hit this guy, but I want the guy with a big old mace for that ball in here or here. Big sword. Um, Ah, he hasn't got what? He hasn't got a pathfinder. That's why he hasn't got any action points left. <laughs> and suddenly we're already almost 40 minutes into the video. And you can you can forget about time when you play this game. So being involved in that combat here. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Sister. Oh, he got hit quite a bit as well. So maybe this guy can just use his um, weapon from the back. Oh, he hasn't got any fatigue left. But that also works some three times away. So let's just move him back. He's going to bleed again this turn. But he'll survive. Um, there's also people we've got with bandages. So you can patch him up. He doesn't suffer an injury. Okay. So there are the bandits. <clears throat> there was the other faction that sort of asked me at the beginning of the fight if we want to attack them together. Mm. If I'd said yes, then this faction and us would have fought against the undead. I think there's no need, we can take care of them ourselves. Now we can move down here. Okay, so we're pretty much done. <coughs> the second round of combat is usually nothing happening. So, the city uh, bloody undead come back. But only those that still have a head. Stands to reason, right? Um, this guy around. So. See, those ones that come back got reduced health. So. Kill this guy with the axe. That guy, there's another fallen hero here, and we haven't got enough to stun him. We also got nets which can throw over people and then sort of um, restricts the movement and lowers their initiative and makes them easier to hit. Um, we also got daggers here, you can switch to a dagger and then sort of try and bypass the armor and just to move them straight into the guts or something. That's um, those dagger attacks go straight to hit points. I'm trying to ignore armor, but the um, the hit chance is lower too. So let's just hold back this turn. Okay, 
So they've eliminated they are on the uh, sort of the coming after us now. Just charming of them. Let's get the sky first. Okay, the guy with the cleaver. The guy and maybe him. He's also got the rotation skill. Okay, can I stun this guy? 89% chance. See, I'm using the two here strike down. If I hit his stun, so he can't do any damage. He can't do much at all, in fact. So he's, he's our Reaper. Nice. Killed two guys and got enough chin points for another hit. Missed seventy three percent. Missed seventy three percent twice. <laughs> that is what the game does, right? So we hit him once. Chop his head off. Good. He's dead. Let's hit him. Somebody died, obviously. <laughs> Sound effect. Wow, he hit me hard with that fucking thing. That's what I'm saying. This guy hasn't got a lot of melee defense. So he doesn't want to suffer that too many times. Fuck. Um, let's disarm this guy. Just about had enough fatigue to do that. But now he is pretty licked. And this guy hit me on the head with a flail. I could throw the net on him. Good enough fatigue. Let's just not act this turn. Okay, I'm gonna rotate him out because he's fucked us all. 31 hit points left. It's a deep abdominal cut, so. He won't be much more good in this fight. You can hit from behind. But he's got, he suffered an injury, so I am, that affects his things. What does it actually say here? Let me bring up the guy. It says here, deep abdominal cut. And usually it says what problem is. Hang on. Oh, here, minus 25% hit points, minus 25% fatigue. So not very pleasant at all. And those are not the times of modern hospitals and surgery and things like that. Best you can do is go to a temple and have some mad monk walk around you. So he can stun again. This guy we're gonna kill first or do we just you could throw a net on this guy? And then maybe just hit him from afar. Well, I just want to show it. You can throw a net on this guy, which means he can't move now. Um, he can break the net, but it's going to cost him action points. <clears throat> There's still quite a few enemies left. I mean, the undead, what, we got three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So there must be a whole lot of bandits about. That guy didn't kill him, unfortunately. This one, though. So we got seven action points left, but if we move, we only got five left. So he's done. Can we get to this guy? No, there's something in the way, okay. 
I'm going to wait with his turn because I want to stun him again. Once he loses that. So, Archer. Oh. Stun be hit. We only got 5 of those, so we can switch. Throw an axe. Missed. Oh, the axe is pissing me off. Um, kill him. Close to killing him. Already move up there. And he can only hit once, I guess. It's not enough to chop the head off. Or even hit. 92% missed. And just in case you're sort of liking this game and you want to play it and just things, things like that are going to happen. And it's quite conspicuous um, how often it happens. I wonder how it is if you added up all the numbers and then sort of checked um, how really, really was. I think it might be sort of leaning towards a negative. <laughs> Um, he broke the net. Stun him again just in case and stop moving. Oh, this guy is pretty fucked. If they got crossbows and archers, I might want to stay out of range. So. More undead coming back. Only one. Okay, here we are. But those crossbows are really dangerous. So there's obstacles in the way. Tree and ruins and shit. <clears throat> See, it tells you here, if, if I move here, Sort of lets me know that I won't have enough fatigue left to actually use the stun on this guy. So I just wait. This guy's pretty tough. He might even dodge this guy's attack. Okay, he lost this armor there. So we can't get around here at home, can we? This way? Do we go the other way? They can't shoot through here, I hope. So maybe just wait and see what they do. Just plain kill this asshole now. Go up to the other big fella. Switch back to my bow here. It's cheaper to do it like that. So we kill him. He suffered a little bit of damage. He's actually okay. <laughs> Did you hear that? Okay, dodged. Good. In the sky. <clears throat> okay, it's not shooting us, that's good. Let's save some hay. Um, fatigue on this guy if we can. And I need some more for those guys. I, I might need a melee guy on that side. Let's choose him. 
and I'm going to keep him completely out of the rest of the fight. Bang. Bang, just one more hit and he'll be dead. This guy can't. I can go exploring up here. And he's pretty healthy. He's also got to see he's got a bandage, so somebody's bleeding or something he can give that to. Nobody's bleeding here, so I'll be okay. So let's go over here. I'll check and move up. That guy's also pretty tired. Can we actually get through here? Only around. Oh, what? How can he shoot for two trees? What the fuck was that here? Where is it here? 23% chance to hit. He rolled an 11. game that's what it does <laughs> that's what a fucking game does get a close gap to those guys um <clears throat> this guy is just send him away somewhere else and a big guy on this side. Oh, what? Right. So where are they all? There's a guy there. Okay. Wait a second. Just bushes, by the way, here. Uh, you can hide in them. So he's bleeding as well. Can you get up to him? Okay. <clears throat> There's some good guys up here. Oh, watch, I didn't see him. Fuck, die. Um. Just wait a second here. No good. No. Mm. Wait. Okay, he's the guy to. Hit this guy nicely. It's bleeding again. Finish him? Yes. Come on up here. See, once those um, archers are engaged, they immediately can't shoot the arranged stuff anymore. Wait, <laughs> this guy's got a big off, I forgot, fuck off weapon. Um, he can't move two charts and hit somebody, only one, so that's why I'm holding back on this one. 
Does somebody might actually come towards us. So um hide them in bushes. Right. Yes. <coughs> but yes. That's how it is. And see we killed so many of them. Their morale is dropped so low they're fleeing. Which is good. Oh. That guy. Just wait before I move him again. But he's finished. It does go. Okay, he's also done. It didn't work. <clears throat> Bang. This guy, you, you gotta respect the one here. He's got an axe. So if he hits you. It'll hurt a lot. Okay. <clears throat> the fleeing guys will try to run away, but because they're in, in contact, they're going to get hit. Um, they suffer a whole lot of damage. Oh. Okay, let's go to here. And that guy up there, we need him. Oh. Okay, he's fleeing, we don't have to hit him again. Sometimes it's, it's worth doing because um, if you kill him, the morale of the other ones will drop even further. There's a guy with a shield. Can't do anything at home, I just do that. Okay, he's a tough guy, he can face up to him. He's got a shield and all, and ideally, I'd have him here. Let's just wait. Oh, nope. <clears throat> Can't get to him. So I've done him. He's fleeing. I can move. If I could disarm this guy, it would be good. Can't. Chop, chop. We get around the back side, maybe. Get nowhere through here. <clears throat> so this is coming up to the hour mark, which is actually quite a bit longer than I was planning. But obviously not every fight you know, is as big or takes as long as this one. So can he, can he go here? I don't really want to with this guy. <coughs> so let's hope we can stun him here, that worked. The others keep fighting each other. Let's hit this guy, oh, oh miss. Good. 
Schuld. Okay, he's running away. Oh, that guy hit me. Okay. But this guy could have actually put up here. Okay. This um sky <coughs> doesn't work. No fatigue left. Oh what? I didn't see him. <laughs> Oops. So it's slowly coming to end here so hopefully i can get some level ups here then i can show you doors that guy annoying this guy's fleeing no need to hit him kill him So that's a, um, a brigand raider, that's an undead. Ugh. More misses. We can't get around here. Okay. Just get rid of them, good. Dang. Okay, that wasn't one of ours, thankfully. Move. Bang, okay, he's dead. So just with the rubble up here. <clears throat> Anyway, this is um, a sort of the vanilla version, but it's I've got some mods installed that sort of enhance the gameplay a little yeah. bit. Say a little bit. There's some cool things which you probably should be using if you wanna enjoy this a bit more. Not guy, two guys left. Just those two, and they hit each other because they hit each other more than us, that's good. And okay, we're done. <clears throat> Massive battle. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so here we see the um, battle statistics how much XP they gained, how much damage they did, how many guys they killed. And those guys with an arrow, they got level ups. And here you get the loot from this battle, which is also quite a bit. So you can take that all into your inventory as long as you got enough space, which we do, because we cleared it beforehand. So I can just show you a level up then. And okay, so we got some guys here leveled up which means we can give out some some points here um so this guy is a polearm guy um i know he's actually going to be an archer eventually just using him as a polearm gun at the moment but his, his skill is pretty low but he's gonna in fact he's gonna be sort of a mixture i'm not going to keep him indefinitely so you Dish out the points as you see fit. Um, it sort of should complement your perks or the the build that you have. So this one is going to get this one and probably that one as well. He's got a lot of fatigue already. He doesn't need any more. Maybe you can give us some white points just in case he does get hit. 
and you can give them perk points. So like this um, resolve here, which is like a um, morale, um, it works together with this um, perk here. So each time you hit somebody, part of your resolve um, impacts on the enemy's resolve. So that's quite nice. Um, he's got killing frenzy already. So each time he kills somebody, he does more damage afterwards. He's got quick hands, so he can switch between his ranged weapon and the throwing weapons. They can do a lot of damage sometimes. And even more with this perk. So um, I'm not sure what else I want to do. Like here's an archer. You obviously give him ranged skill. Um, we give him ranged defense as well. We can give him this here if you want to use the overwhelm perk. Give him fatigue, that should be over 100 on an archer. Take this on. Somehow he's got very low initiative, even though that is quite high. This is these are the modified stats by, by injuries and things like that, or um, little traits that they have. So, why, um, like he's got a broken knee and that's permanent, um, so he's got minus 40% initiative. So this guy, eventually I'm gonna have to get rid of him or let him die. Let him die like, you know. So he's got a bow mastery, throwing mastery. He's got Pathfinder already, quick hands. We can, we don't wanna give him dodge, maybe nimble. Not sure. Again, um, I can make up my mind because I you don't want to mess these things up. Um, I'm just showing you as a sort of demonstration thing. This guy's got um, skills here, extra skills in a melee skill and melee defense, which means the range of, of the points is, um, is higher. So usually it's between one and three, but um, because we got two stars here, it's it's guaranteed to be at um, three. If he got three stars, he can even get, get four. So we give him more melee skill, more melee defense. And we give him more hit points because he is in the front. He's also got dodge. He might need that. Maybe you should take the five here. And dodge, for example, means that you get a percentage of your initiative added to your melee defense. And I'm not sure which perk I'm going to give him. Yeah, and that's how it goes, guys. Um, so that's just a little demonstration of the game. If you like, I can do a more in-depth thing. Um, let me know what you think, or maybe you just enjoy the game. So even if there's just one or two people who sort of didn't know about it and fancy it, I think it's my job's done. Thanks for watching. I wish you all the best. Bye bye.